my name is Karina and this is my perfume map. Today I'm going to talk about 10 fragrances that I was influenced to buy uh, right here on YouTube. So I am pretty excited about inexpensive fragrances. So I do watch a lot of channels that talk about, you know, fragrances under 20, fra fragrances under 25 or inexpensive perfumes that smell like more expensive perfumes. I watched a lot of um, uh, Shauna J. I've watched a lot of videos by Ruth Ann McKinnon. I've watched Skin Sense for Fuss Pots. I've watched Ksenia. And I watch almost, almost everybody that I come across <laughs> as far as like what's recommended to me. But the channels that I really make sure to watch all their videos, usually they will be focusing on more affordable scents. I'm just like a value cheapskate slash frugal person through and through. So even when I have a hobby, I'm going to try to do it like the least expensive way that I can. And, um, you know, these days I actually buy my perfumes more on the kind of blind buy used lot side. So I'm not really picking out a lot of perfumes, but all of these fragrances that I'm about to show you, I definitely, they were picked out based on a recommendation I heard by um, an, a YouTuber slash influencer slash fragrance fan that I sort of resonated with. Now this isn't like an exhaustive list. There's, there's a lot of other fragrances that I'm sure I have bought, maybe even based on um, people whose recommendations I take with like a grain of salt because you know, there's, there's a difference between the fragrance fans and then somebody who's definitely an influencer who's making a commission on sales. And I don't think there's anything wrong with making a commission on sales. Like however you are making money, that's personal. That's nobody's business. Um, we all need money to survive. And I personally make money in a way that I'm sure somebody out there would object to. Um, I don't do anything wrong. It's just, you know, everybody's got an opinion when it comes to like how people make money. And like, I really don't have an opinion about that. At the same time, you know, you can tell the difference between like kind of making a sale, a commission and just saying like, Hey, this fragrance is awesome. And I was excited about it. Right. So anyway, here are these fragrances that I wanted to share with you. The first one I'm going to show you is the very first blind buy I ever did. And I was influenced by Amy from Savor Salvage Scents. And she does still make videos, but they seem to be um, pretty few and far between. And I really enjoy, I always watch it when she does. I think I've watched all of her videos. But this one is um, Adam Levine for Women. And you've probably heard of this. It's like a very popular celebrity scent. It's still very cheap. It's still under $10. The perfumer is Jan Vass, I think it's Vassine, somebody, somebody like phonetically spelled that out for me once, and I think they said Vassine, um, who is a very popular, I believe, master perfumer. This is a very, um, kind of, I would say like a naturally sweet amber sandalwood vanilla. It also has marigold and saffron. And it, this thing is so good in the cold weather. It just got pretty cold here. Like in the mornings, it's like 15 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, that's pretty cold. And I'll always try this out in the summer. And I still like it in the summer, but I'm kind of like really itching for the dry down because the opening is like so intense. But in the winter, I mean, the cold weather really just, I feel like it smooths it all out. And this is a beautiful fragrance. And like I said, this was like my first blind buy ever. And, um, I mean, do I have a dent? I guess it's a dent, but probably not a respectable one for how long I've had it. But I, every time I spray it and wear it, especially when it's cold, I think it's beautiful. There's a beautiful vanilla spicy dry down that's worth the wait. And if you're th wondering if you like this one, it is, it does have like a vintage kick to it. Like as soon as you smell it, it just kind of smells like something from the past, even though I don't think it's that old. 
the second one I bought, I bought at the same time. I believe I got these from Fragrance Net. And um, this is CK Into You. And I was influenced by Ksenia, who, uh, you know, I think probably you know who that is. And at the time, when I first started watching her, I think she was maybe 21 or 22. And I think now she's uh, 25 or 6. I don't know. But she really, really talked about this one a lot. And I like this a lot too. This is also is sandalwood. It was funny that I bought these at the same time because these actually kind of smell like a day and night version of each other. This one has some sort of like cactus note or aloe note, something like that. And then grapefruit and sandalwood. It's really good. It definitely smells like the mall though. Like it smells like you just walked by Abercrombie and Fitch or something in the 2000s, early 2000s. But it's really pretty. It's really fresh. It's very, um, it's very like energizing. It's got citrus in it. So it, I think it could be a year round fragrance. It kind of smells like a fall fragrance, but it also kind of smells like a summer night. Really pretty. And this, these two together were my first blind buy and they were very successful. So I think it kind of set me off to just blind buy my way through it all. The next one, I'll just try to do it kind of in order of influence, who influenced me, is um, Stella McCartney Pop, also by Ksenia. I think she was like, this is my favorite um, Barbie doll, doll head scent. And I had no idea what she meant. Now that I'm smelling it, I do know what she means. Like, I just, it's kind of that plasticky doll hair smell that's kind of sweet. <clears throat> this is a nice fragrance. It's a little bit on the optimistic side for me. And I know that kind of sounds weird that, like, I wouldn't want an optimistic perfume. But it's very youthful optimistic. Like, it doesn't smell like, um, like a mom who is tired at the end of the day, which is kind of like what I am. So this, this feels like a stretch for me to wear. It also kind of reminds me of Twilight Woods by Bath and Body Works, which I liked very, very much. This one just is a little bit more, um, it's just a little more upbeat. There's like a tomato leaf note, which you can smell and is nice. It's very nice. I like wearing it. And again, I, I think I paid $17 for this. I just looked it up and this has gone up in price. This is more around $45 now. I, I wouldn't pay that, but $17, yes, I would definitely pay. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I have it. And again, Ksenia was the person who influenced me to buy this. Uh, the next one that I'll show you is Skin Musk. And I actually just wore this the other night. Um, I wore this to a holiday event and it was actually outside. It was very cold. I think it was about 20 degrees Fahrenheit last night. And this was an outdoor event. I mean, it was outdoor and indoor, but um, it was cold. And I probably could have worn a much more powerful perfume, but I'm glad I didn't because there is something really nice about wearing a cozy musky scent when you're really cold and bum bundled up. It kind of just adds to that like bundled up feeling. And I wasn't really feeling like I needed to like express myself with my fragrance at this event. You know, I'm kind of glad that I wore this and this is very pretty. So people will describe this scent um, many ways. They will say that it's sandalwood. They will say that it's musky. I'll tell you that I think this smells like baby powder. This is like a baby powder skin oil to me, like a baby powder musk, which is not at all a complaint. I love baby powder scents. I think they smell clean. It doesn't remind me of diapers or anything. It reminds me of just clean and fresh. And I believe that I was influenced on this oil in particular by skin scents for fuss pots. I know that she talks about this oil. I know that even if it wasn't her that I originally heard about it from, like that's her like ringing endorsement. I'm pretty sure is why I bought it. It could have been Ruth Ann McKinnon because she also talks about this fragrance. Um, she might talk about it more in like the actual perfume spray. But on top of that, 
I think I remember this from my childhood because I know this used to be made by Bonnie Bell and I definitely had some kind of Bonnie Bell. I feel like it was like a roll on perfume when I was a kid. So maybe I already even had this, but skin scents for fuss pots. I'm definitely going to give this to her as the one who influenced me and I appreciate it. I know she really likes it. I think she doesn't think it smells like baby powder like I do, but um, yeah, this is a really nice fragrance. The next one, I'll just go on with Ruth Ann McKinnon. Um, this is Vanderbilt by Gloria Vanderbilt. And this is definitely a Ruth Ann McKinnon made me buy it. I think she said that this was her signature scent when she was maybe in high school and working at the mall. This um, is a really good fragrance that smells like lavender and pineapple and musk. And I think there's a lot more notes in it, but I get lavender. I'm actually wearing this. I'm going to reapply on my skin. I get like the lavender and then there's a sweet pineapple and a musky scent. There is a little bit of a vintage kind of peepee -pee smell. It's just there in the beginning, but um, it's in there. So it could be, I don't know what smells like pee but it's like, maybe it's like a jasmine or some sort of floral, but the dry down is gorgeous. And this actually smells a lot like YSL Libra to me. Um, if you do not like vintage scents, you might not agree with me because this is smells like, like Libra if it was created, um, you know, decades ago, it just got that sweet, lavender kind of smooth musky thing going on this is a very pretty perfume and I think I paid $11 for this full bottle and I think it's still pretty cheap and it comes up in um vintage lots a lot um yeah so that's pretty good and then this one is diamonds and rubies by Elizabeth Taylor this was definitely this is I feel like one of the very first Ruth Ann McKinnon videos I ever watched she talked about how this was like um, I think she said this was one of her true loves. I just get so nostalgic smelling it because it reminds me of like watching fragrance videos on YouTube, which is just like a weird, like, this is like where we're at, right? In the world. Like I'm nostalgic for stuff I remember watching on my phone. But, um, this fragrance has rose and peach and cinnamon and musk. It's like a, a very, it's the perfumer Sophia Grossman. And if you've smelled like um, Exclamation and Paris and this one, she has a lot that smell like this. Like this is like, I think she really likes this mixture where it's like a kind of a peach musky smell. In fact, this smells a lot like YSL Paris, only this one is a little bit more like country. Like it smells a this reminds me also of Kitchen by Solstice Scents, if you've ever smelled that, where it kind of smells like a, uh, like a pastry stone fruit in like a cottage. This kind of gives me that same feeling. Diamonds and Rubies by Elizabeth Taylor. Again, like maybe 14 bottles, 14 bottles, 14 bottles for a dollar, $14 for a bottle. Um, really pretty and I appreciate Ruth Ann's um, endorsement or her review of that fragrance. I really appreciate it and she convinced me to get it. Okay, the next one is, okay, this is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Exotic. I bought this on the, based on the review I saw by Meta Perfume. She did a she has a pretty popular video of like all of the Elizabeth Arden green tea perfumes that she has. And I think she said that this one was her favorite or it was one of her favorites. So I got it and it is really good. It's more, it's like a cleaner, more floral version. It doesn't have like that bite of um, the original green tea. It's like lighter and more floral and even more soapy, I would say. And I know the perfumer is Rodrigo Flores Rue, who is a pretty popular perfumer. So this is one of those that's like a good cheapy by a, by a, you know, kind of a well-known perfumer. 
But yeah, Meta Perfume influenced me to get that one. <coughs> and then the next one is one of my favorite perfumes. You probably are rolling your eyes if you've watched a lot of my videos because I talk about this so much. Perry LS 360. And I was influenced by Shauna J to get this one. This is like a really sharp, clean melon scent. This is like um, the most cologne perfume. One of the most cologne-like perfumes I have. And I'm saying C-A-L-O-N-E, like cologne. And it's like a ketone that they use to make watermelon and aquatic scents. In this one, it smells very melony, but it also does kind of smell watery. The initial spray is really strong and kind of harsh, chemically smell, but the dry down is so clean and soft and it just smells like a beautiful night cream, like a sweet, gorgeous, mature night cream. And my husband loves this one. I love this one. This is like uh, a no brainer if I just want to throw something on that smells really good and I only am going to wear a couple sprays because it is very strong. Perry Ellis 360 and Shauna J is the one who um, convinced me to get that one. And she I haven't seen her make a video in a while. So I hope she makes videos again someday because they're really, really good. Now here's one that's kind of expensive. Um, before I put myself on a $30 or under blind buy strict policy, I was just buying whatever I wanted. And this is Pure Poison by Dior. And I was influenced by Curly Sense. You may saw a video where she was like walking around in Miami or something. And she was just asking people. I think she was having people compare this to Baccarat Rouge. And I think most people liked this one better. This is a sweet, clean, soapy jasmine. It's weird because this perfume smells sort of generic to me, but also I can't think of anything else like it. That doesn't make any sense, but it's like when you smell it, you're just like, oh yeah, I think I've smelled that, but then I don't have anything else like it. And I've had people ask me in the comments, like, can you think of a dupe for pure poison? And I really have like racked my brain and I don't have one. I don't know of a dupe for, for pure poison. I mean, I don't have one in my collection. So if you love this perfume, you might just have to buy it. And this has really good perfumers behind it. I know Dominic Ropion is one of the perfumers and maybe like, I don't know who else. I just know that, that he's one of them. Really, really classy smelling perfume. There's something about this one that you can just tell like this is not a drugstore cheapie. There's a few perfumes in my collection that I have that when I spray them, I'm like, yeah, this is expensive. Like you can just kind of tell sometimes there's cheapies that smell expensive. And then there's like something like pure poison that is kind of expensive and it smells kind of expensive. It's kind of like Livia Bell. If you compare Livia Bell to all the scents that smell like Livia Bell, I think that there's something about Livia Bell that's noticeably better. And I feel that way about Pure Poison too. Just when I put this on, I just feel like, you know, there's no mistake in that I'm wearing a nice perfume. This is a very nice perfume and don't blind buy it because it's, I think it's like $80 for one ounce. But if you can check it out at a store or something, definitely do that. And am I down to the last one already? Okay. So the last one I have is Floral Marshmallow by Dossier. And I was definitely influenced to get this one by Kelly from That Smells Divine. Um, I already had a Love Don't Be Shy dupe. It was the um, the um, oil perfumery one, which I really like. But yeah, this is super good. I'm surprised that... I was even surprised when I first ever smelled this, how much I liked it. Because I'm not somebody who wants to smell like marshmallows. But it's so floral too, and it's orange blossom, and it smells like that copper tone, old school sunscreen orange blossom with marshmallow. So it's really pretty. It's like really like I don't know. There's like that's a very interesting combination. It it smells like an experiment that went right. This is so pretty, and I'm never gonna buy the original <laughs> by Killian because. I just, I don't know, like I don't want to spend that much money, but 
I will probably buy this again and when it runs out. This one or the oil perfumery. The oil perfumery one is really good. And I don't mind roller balls or perfume oils at all. Some people don't like them, but I think they're fine. Anyway, yeah, floral marshmallow um, influenced by Kelly from That Smells Divine. And there they are. Um, like I said, there are other people who have influenced me. These were the ones that just came to mind like right away. Like I definitely know why I bought these and who told me to buy them. So that's it. And I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're staying warm and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Subscribe.